Morning lovely peoples, hope you're well. In our thoughts so far looking at the life of Joseph and the parallels between him and our heavenly Joseph, the Lord Jesus Christ, we have looked at his character as both a beloved and obedient son, both in their early years growing in wisdom and favour with both God and man. And yet, as we enter the next phase of their stories, we see that those qualities that set them apart from their brethren led them to being misunderstood brothers. Let us read the next instalment from Genesis chapter 37 and verses 12 to 19. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and there he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding the flocks. And the man said, They have departed from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Joseph had received visions or dreams from God that had foretold Joseph's destiny and I believe with the integrity of his character he had revealed to them to them in all honesty and with a desire for the truth to be made known not with naive grandstanding and gloating like others have interpreted. In similar fashion Jesus had come to do the will of his father in heaven and the truth he shared would likewise cause an unfavourable and disbelieving reaction. I know I mentioned it in our last talk, but it is worth noting again that both of them were sent. And they went. I love the phrase used by Joseph in our passage when called upon by Jacob. Here I am, he says. It reminds me of Isaiah's vision in Isaiah chapter 6, as the prophet laments over the state of Jerusalem and his own brethren, Israel, for their waywardness and their lack of understanding that left them in their own undirected Ways Their end was surely one of destruction, if not redirected. There appears to be a discussion in heaven that they should be forewarned. And the Godhead agrees that someone should inform them. And so the question is postulated, whom shall I send and who will go for us? I like Joseph, Isaiah replies, here am I send me. In like manner, our heavenly Joseph, the Lord Jesus, undertook that same quest with the same resolve, but not just for a lost Israel, but a fallen world for you and for me. Again, we note all would go, all would be heard, but not understood. All would be seen, but not perceived. When Jacob sends Joseph, take note 
of his specific request. Then he said to them, please go and see if it is well with your brothers. We currently live in a time where the worry and burden of our heart is that our friends, family and loved ones become unwell. And like Jacob, our Heavenly Father is no less disinterested in our current well-being. And I too do hope you are well. But he goes a step further as he is also keenly interested in the well-being of our souls. The Apostle Paul writes, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. When God the Son, our heavenly Joseph, willingly came into this world, as the Son of Man, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And those who heed his words and believe on him in all humility with repentance and faith in the wonderful redemption and salvation he has wrought, can truly sing with full assurance the words of Horatio Spafford and composed by Philip Bliss. It is well, it is well with my soul. Before we conclude our thought for today, I would also like to bring your attention to the phrase that Joseph utters in verse 16. A man finds Joseph wandering in the field, wandering because his brothers were not where they were supposed to be. And he asks, what are you seeking, Joseph? replies, I am seeking my brothers. From what we have thought about in previous thoughts, and when we discuss the character of Joseph's brothers in our next instalment, I'm sure being associated with them was not something that will necessarily be something one would want to own up to. But Joseph unashamedly identifies with them as his brothers. The man clearly knowing who they were. Again, we see this wonderful parallel with our heavenly Joseph. The writer to the Hebrews puts it more succinctly than I ever could when he writes the following about Jesus. For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. For the believer, it is of such comfort that they have a friend that sticks closer than a brother, despite our failing and lack of faithfulness. And even more, that he is willing to call us brethren. It is sad the plans that Joseph's brothers dreamt against him and their attitude towards their dreamy sibling, not dissimilar to Jesus' own family, his brothers and sisters, also declaring him gone out of his mind as he began to declare the good news of God's coming kingdom. But more of that next time, God willing. Hope you've benefited from something we have looked at today about Joseph a misunderstood brother. And I pray the Lord helps us to learn more about our equally misunderstood heavenly brother, the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Enjoy your day. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for this time we can spend aside looking into your word and learning from it. Again, we thank you for these wonderful parallels 
between Joseph and the Lord Jesus. And as Joseph was willing to come into this world, as Joseph was willing to seek his brothers, we thank you that the Lord Jesus was willing to come to seek and to save that which was lost. Me, you. We thank you for the Saviour that he is. We thank you for those that believe on him. He is not ashamed to call them his brethren. We thank you for that brother that we have. We thank you that he is that friend who sticks closer than any brother. Lord, stick to close to us now, we pray at this time, as uh, the effects of this virus seem to have increased. Lord, we thank you for those that you have kept safe thus far we thank you for those that you have helped through times of illness and those who are unwell now that you are helping but lord we pray continue to protect us be with us help us bless us look after our families and loved ones we pray may they know your goodness and may you help us to understand your love and care towards us more help us to understand the goodness of god in sending Jesus and who he truly is, because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. God be with you.